Every couple of weeks, I feel just completely drained. My habits feel like burdens rather than stepping stones for better things, and I'm just lagging it. I've come up with some super helpful and honestly realistic tips that help me be productive even if I don't feel like it, and I'd like to share them with you. My first tip is to just start, which sounds, duh, just start being productive. But I mean, break it down a little bit, right? Break down your habits or break down your goals or whatever you're trying to do, because as you break it down a little bit more and make it a little bit simpler and a little bit more refined, what happens is it's not such a big step and it's not such a big deal to get up and get off the couch. It's just a tiny little thing. I feel as though the more I break it down and the simpler and more just nonsensical how easy it is to do that goal, the more likely I'm gonna do it. And then also, as I do those things, it builds confidence and it builds my ability and my momentum and things like that. So that way I can accomplish more things and get more done. Another great technique is the Pomodoro method. I got this from Rob Dial. He's a great podcaster that I listen to and he teaches coaches how to be coaches. But essentially what you do is you set a timer for 25 minutes and you're just completely productive. Don't lose focus, don't get distracted by anything, put your phone on, don't, do not disturb. Whatever it takes so you can focus completely on your one task. Then after those 25 minutes, you set another timer for five minutes. And for those five minutes, you take a break, you relax, you go for a walk, you do really whatever you want. So you don't get so tired and so bored and I don't know, overwhelmed, but so you don't get stressed out. So then after those five minutes of relaxation, then you can jump right back in and do another 25 minutes of productivity. And what happens is I get those 30 minute chunks and I can schedule accordingly because then I can do two chunks of hard, dedicated, focused work and that's an hour of my day. As I fill in my calendar, I can plan for an hour and that's two sessions of focused work to get a good amount of things done. Another technique that I have is stacking the deck in my favor. I set up my environment to make it as easy as possible to be productive or accomplish the goals I want to accomplish. A good example of this is if I'm trying to eat healthier, I know at the grocery store not to pick up junk food and chips and say, oh, I'll eat it sparingly or... No, for real. I swear I won't eat a whole tub of ice cream this time. It, it's not worth it. Use your good judgment now to set yourself up for later. So that way you don't even have the junk food. You don't have the ice cream and the cookies and the candy at home. You, you don't even have the choice, right? Another good example is leaving your clothes out the night before if you're wanting to work out first thing in the morning. Another piece of this is to not have any distraction. Most of the time, it's things like our phone, it's things like having our notifications on for laptops, right? Having notifications enabled is okay if you want notifications, but it's much better to take control of those things and put your phone on do not disturb and don't let yourself get distracted by all these different flashing lights and notifications and choose to look at them on your terms. Or I'm gonna use this 10 minutes of every hour to be able to check notifications if I need to. If you don't dedicate a certain time to it, you're gonna end up just kinda opening your phone because you're bored or because you have nothing better to do or you're procrastinating. And so if you keep your phone tucked away in a drawer or on do not disturb so you're not getting the constant notifications, you won't be constantly pestered and bothered and distracted and encouraged to shirk off your work. A bonus tip for this, or a second piece, is to keep your work area clean. It can be used as a great ramp up and a build up to get the momentum going. You can just start putting things away, putting in the spots they belong, wiping things down, getting everything organized. That's gonna keep your area cleaner, but then also a decluttered workspace is a decluttered mind. If you keep your work area clean and, and streamlined, it's gonna help you be a lot more focused. Another thing that I like to mention that is extremely important and I've noticed it more and more the more I focus on it, is taking care of my health. Getting great nutrition, exercise, and sleep are three core principles that you can never ever replace with anything else. It's really critically and crucially important that you get enough sleep, you get enough nutrition, and you get enough exercise. You have to have all three to have that perfect synergy where you're having that energy to stay motivated and stay disciplined to get things done. Focus on your nutrition, focus on your exercise, and focus on your sleep, because if you give it that extra attention and it needs, like for me, I've been focusing on sleep. If I'm getting enough sleep, then throughout the day, I'm operating at 100% rather than 70. And over time, what happens is that compounds, you're just gonna be operating at a level that's way better than if you don't take care of yourself. Next, I wanna talk about Parkinson's Law and the 80-20 rule, okay? These are two things that I use together in synchronization to try and be as productive as possible. Parkinson's Law states that any body of work is gonna expand to fill the amount of time allotted for it. Parkinson's Law states that any body of work is gonna expand to fill the amount of time allotted for it. Okay. The 80-20 rule, on the other hand, states that 80% of the work is done in 20% of the time, and 20% of the work is done in 80% of the time. 
So what we're gonna do is we're gonna mesh those two together. Let me give you an example of a real life situation where this works. Let's say you have plans to go out on Friday night at six o'clock and your mom said, Hey, I told you, you guys have your room clean and it's 5.30. Normally, you'll spend a Saturday and you'll spend all day Saturday, six hours cleaning your room and making it perfect. But you don't have six hours, you only have 30 minutes. So what are you gonna do? Obviously, you're gonna clean your room so dang fast. You're gonna be hustling, you're gonna be grinding, you're gonna be pushing, you're gonna be going like this, right? Your room's gonna look 80% better in 20% of the time. In that 15 minutes, you're gonna get so much of the work done that that last little bit doesn't really matter. So what you're gonna do here is you're gonna give yourself that 20% of time to get 80% of work done. Don't give yourself the 80% to get 20% done, only give yourself that tiny little bit. You can combine this with the Pomodoro method that I mentioned before, where you only give yourself 25 minutes to get 80% of the work done. I know what you're saying. Tyler, I'm a perfectionist. I need to get 100% done. I'm not okay with giving myself 80% knowing I could have gotten the last 20% and made it perfect. Joe Rogan actually has a really great podcast about this. He talks with a fighter about the different training styles, how it's about volume over intensity and why intensity should only be for very rare cases, but volume is much more important. I'll link it in one of the corners. Essentially what they talk about is how volume is more important because over time it builds up significantly more. 10 push-ups once a week versus five push-ups a day because you're not maxing out. By the end of the year, you're gonna have done significantly more push-ups because you're working out once a day versus five days a week. With the 80-20 the rule, you're only giving yourself that 20% of time to do 80% of the work so that way you're making more bodies of work. If I'm painting or drawing every single day and I get 80% of the way there, that's fine, my 80% over time is gonna improve and get better and I'm gonna be able to test things and figure out what works and what doesn't. But if I'm refusing to, to give out anything less than 100%, then what ends up happening is that I'm gonna to strive to hit this 100%, but I'm only gonna learn a little bit. If I give myself 80%, 80%, 80%, 80%, 80%, from all five of those examples, I'm gonna have learned much, much more and now my 80% is gonna be just as good as 100%. But the thing is, now it's another six months before I do another 100%, but during that whole time, I'm doing 80%, 80%, 80%, and it's about constant growth and getting better. So you're gonna use this with the Pomodoro Method and Parkinson's Law, where you're only gonna give yourself a select amount of time, right? 25 minutes to get as much done for something as possible. If you wanna be an artist and draw every day, then give yourself 25 minutes to draw to make as great of a piece of work as you can. If you wanna go further than that, you can, but the idea is that you're getting the reps under your belt, you're getting the volume. I highly suggest you check out that video, I'll link it so you can see it, because he explains it a lot better than I do. Those have been my top tips for being productive, even if I don't feel like it, even if I'm feeling kind of bleh. I hope those have helped you and I hope at least one of those is gonna make a difference. I just wanna say thank you so much for watching and remember, make it happen. I'll see you around.